Today, I think we're going to be digging into the subfloor in this kitchen. Because I found some mold growing in the corner of this cabinet right here behind me, I feel like I need to do a little bit of exploration. I need to dig into the subfloor a little bit and make sure that that rot is only surface level. Since this corner is sagging from the weight of the pressure tank and hot water heater, I need to add an additional pier and footing under that part of the crawl space. Since I do plan to put tile in this kitchen floor, I want to make sure that it's supported properly. You might think that your floor should be strong enough to support the weight of tile and not shift, but you need to make sure that during special events, say you have family over for Christmas, that the extra weight of people gathering in the kitchen doesn't cause the floor to deflect and crack your tile. That's the main concern. So what I might do is go ahead, get under the kitchen, see what it looks like, and see if I potentially need to add some more supports under there. Now if you've done a project like this and you've had to support a floor for tile on pier and beam, let me know in the comments. I would love to get your feedback so that I know how to install it properly. Let's get going. Right here where the island was is where I plan on cutting my first hole. This corner right here is the corner where the water heater and pressure tank reside. It's also where some of that black mold is that I found. Because of that, I want to go ahead and tear up this part of the subfloor to make sure that there's no other damage from water. And I also think it'll be easier to take up this laminate to just pry up the boards as opposed to peeling it all back. I don't know what was under there before, and I don't really want to mess with trying to scrape the glue off. I'd rather put down new flooring and make sure that my tile lasts a very long time. Water was leaking from the hot water heater and the pressure tank inside the cabinet. There was mold growing on the inside and also wrapping around the outside corner by the kitchen and dining room. I pried up this first board right here since it was a small section to see if the damage had gotten into the subfloor. There was massive bowing underneath the water cabinet as well. I wanted to look to make sure that nothing else was damaged. There's some discoloration of the subfloor in this part of the kitchen. This piece gave me a little bit of difficulty because it was stuck under the drywall and attached to the larger piece of linoleum beside it. The floor had three layers of either vinyl or linoleum. Instead of messing with trying to scrape the glue up and all the individual layers, I just thought, you know what, let's just take it all up. It'll be really simple to buy a little bit more plywood. I don't remember why I was wearing my mask and earphones at this point. I think the mask was for allergies and I guess the earphones were for style points. These boards were heavy. Between it being a three quarter inch plywood and having three sheets of linoleum on it, it was actually surprisingly difficult to move. Though the existing subfloor is in good condition, it flexes way more than plywood. Modern plywood is harder because it has different bands of wood going in different directions, adding strength. The entire kitchen can be covered by three to four pieces of plywood. Two are obviously here full size, and then a couple are cut into small strips to line the back edge and the side, and also under the refrigerator. As you can see, it's a fairly simple task to do. Just pry up a couple sides, and then cut the seams in between the pieces of plywood. I had a very near miss right here. Whenever I was trying to maneuver this piece of plywood to take it out, I dropped it. And when I did, one of the nails went all the way through my boot. It hit the sole at the bottom. I don't know how I managed this, but seeing where that hole is, it missed my foot. It went between my toes. I think my heel must have been very far back in my boot. Either way, I was extremely lucky there.
With the two main panels out, all that was left was scraps that were cut to fit the corners around the edge of the room. This took longer because all the pieces were cut into small strips and had to be pried up individually. I had a lot of cutting to do with the knife and a lot of prying to do. And now we have an open subfloor. With the kitchen floor done, I wanted to inspect the termite damage. I was going to be cutting through the flooring, so to do that accurately, I measured the trap door to find how thick the hardwood boards are, and then I measured the subfloor and set my skill saw to the depth that would cut through both of them, but not cut through the joist. I believe that was an inch and a half if I remember correctly. I started on the board that had damage on it right before it got to where the boards were clean again and just obviously cut right through it. I wanted to keep as much of the good wood intact as possible, so I cut it off right where the damage ended and right by the seams so I could easily replace those boards and not have to get extremely long stretches of wood. You can see that the top boards are pretty badly damaged. Keep in mind that this is not active termite activity, it's something from years ago. Whenever I went back and looked at some of the real estate photos of this property from even 2015, the holes in the floor were still there. So this has been a problem for a long time and nobody's addressed it yet. That's, I guess, where I come in. I'm trying to take this thing back to being a brand new house effectively. This kind of stuff is not going to be able to stay here. There was a layer of felt or tar paper, I'm not exactly sure which it was, in between the hardwood flooring and the subfloor. This acts as a moisture barrier and an air barrier between the two layers since neither of them are airtight. <laughs> Whenever I tried to pry those boards against the subfloor, it crumbled right through. There's absolutely no structure. <laughs> you can see the confused look whenever I'm doing that. I didn't even need tools to take this flooring up. I could just do it all with my hands. That's how bad it was. It was brittle and just snapped. Hardly any pressure was required. The damage to the subfloor extended further under the hardwood planks. I had to remove a few more boards so that I could make sure I was cutting out all the damaged areas. And I'm glad I did, otherwise I wouldn't have found this next gem. You'll see what I'm talking about in here just a second. The damage extended all the way to the footer, and I'm going to have to make sure that the plates that are holding up the joists are in good condition as well. I cut out as far as I needed to until the boards had some structural integrity, which was about where you saw me cut that line. That leaves me with about a hole two feet by three feet. Not extremely large, but I'm gonna need to find some flooring to replace it. I've heard that some people who do renovations take wood from other parts of the house to make patches where necessary. I've considered this approach by taking some of the boards out of the closet between the two bedrooms to replace what's here in the living room. See the gem I was talking about? This is it. This floor joist is completely split in half. In fact, the subfloor was what was holding this thing in place. So now I have a hole in the dining room and no subfloor in the kitchen. Really no kitchen at all. Now we can finally see just how deep the crawl space is. The floor joists are 2x6s and they're sitting on a beam made of two sister 2x6s on the piers. Well, I can't exactly say that I saw that coming. That termite damage was extensive. I knew that the subfloor was going to be damaged, probably more so than the top boards, but for some reason I didn't imagine that the joist would be eaten as well, which is common sense. I just hadn't thought of it. In any case, I have created a lot of dust in there, 
and I've got all the fans on and the doors and windows open hoping that I can clear some of it out a little bit. Anyway, now that I know that that joist is damaged, I'm really wondering what's going to happen whenever we open up the walls to take down the drywall. I imagine that some of those 2x4s that are holding the framing up on the outside wall will be damaged as well. Only time will tell, and I'm going to cross that road when I get to it. I can now see how large the crawl space is under the house, and I really don't have that much clearance. It looks to be about 12 to 16 inches under the joist, which means that if I were to go across a beam, I couldn't get under it. So I'm facing the real possibility of being completely sectioned off from that part of the house. Now since the floor is open, I might go ahead and dig it out a little bit, but I don't know how much good that's going to do, knowing that it's just in this isolated corner and really not connected to anything else. With a fair amount of work done, that's where I'm going to call it a day. If you want to follow this renovation from start to finish, I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel. Like the video for the YouTube algorithm, and I look forward to reading your comments down below. In the meantime, I'm going to sit here and contemplate why I wanted to do this in the first place.